I'm going to take you guys through sort of the journey of our season last year. Um, so the first two things that we, we wanted to sort of define was what, one, what is hitting, and then second, what is good hitting, right? So what do we do when, when the ball is coming at us? And I'm going to break that down in a second, and then what do we sort of need to strive for? So what even is hitting? Sort of an essential piece of the puzzle that I feel like we don't uh, spend a lot of time talking about. So here we have, we got a pitcher, she throws the ball, we got a hitter. Uh, hitting is called, it's called perception and action coupling. So basically we see and gather information, we see the ball, we see what the pitcher's doing, and then we have to match that with a move. Some in anticipation involved, we're picking up early cues on the pitcher's body and, and her patterns, and then we're getting ready to swing. And then based off of that, we make an interpretation and a decision. And ultimately, we swing the bat, and we time the ball up, and we time our bat up with the ball, both in location and speed. So it's the interaction between what you see and what you do. So it's a good example of what you have to deal with. And this is what pitchers do. They come up and in, and then they go down the way. So one of the, the skills, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this later, but one of the skills we need to have is we have to be able to create space because you know, the feeling of the ball up and in is very different from the feeling of the ball being down and away. The ball up and in feels tight, like it's right next to me, and the ball down and away feels like it's in the auto batter's box. So being able to, to adjust between the two is super important, I think. Okay, so during ball flight, and dig it down a little bit further, so first thing we do is we just gather information, and then we interpret that information, and then we make a decision, first of all, whether we're going to swing or not, and if that decision is yes, then we got to figure out where and when to swing. And this all needs to happen immediately. So the speed of the process here is going to have a significant in impact on your swing. So if you're going to pick up where the ball is going to end up really quickly, well, now you have time. You have the feeling of having time. Well, if, if you're not very strong at you know, reading the ball and getting good reads, well, now you, you're going to feel like you're going to be late. And based off of, this is going to be different pitch to pitch, so based off of, uh, where, where in this process, where the pitch is, when you're like, okay, the ball is going to be here and I'm going to swing, your swing now is going to have to change with that. So, again, we got an environment, just a pitcher, and then we have us as a hitter, and then the inter interaction between the two is the task of hitting. So, uh, there's going to be some variability. The pitcher is going to throw different pitches, different speeds, um, so we that, that definitely means that we also have to have some variability on the swing side. It has to match. So some takeaways from a little task analysis on what hitting is. First of all, game speed is going to have an influence on the swing, so we want to make sure our practices are representative to the game. And then second, we want variability. We don't want the same swing over and over, and so we want to see some variance in our metrics. Again, so this has some serious implications for how we practice. Conclusion, we got to measure game swings. So the uh, second piece of this is, OK, now we sort of have an idea of what hitting is. Now we need to know what good hitting is. So the first thing we did, first thing I did was, OK, this is the past five seasons, every single Division I team's season stats. A good friend of mine, Anthony Chattel, he like gave me this giant spreadsheet. I was like, all right, cool, let's run a number. So uh, this is runs per game and uh, percentage of balls put in play. Ran a little correlation, found no correlation. So you can put the ball in play at a really high rate, score a lot of runs, or you can put the ball in play at a really high rate and not score a lot of runs. Second one is batting average. Batting average is a high correlation to runs per game. And the last thing I looked at was weight on base average on OPS, which, uh, if you guys are not familiar, it weights based off of how important um, the hit, a particular hit is. So as we all know that a double is better than a single, and a triple is better than a double, and a home run is better than all of them. But uh, one thing that batting average also doesn't take into account is the walk. So we all know the walk is important. It's not super celebrated, and it's something I talk about a lot. It's like, OK, you know, especially on the travel ball fields, take a walk. It's like, oh, man, I really wanted to hit, right? And then we run the first, and no one really you know, celebrates it. And then next, next batter, first pitch, base it up the middle, and everyone claps. Right? It's almost the same thing, but the sort of difference in how we value the two events is uh, much different. 
So uh, now that we know uh, the weighted stats are more important than the non-weighted stats, we charted based off of where the ball was hit. So the first thing you know is don't hit pop-ups. It's terrible. Um, second is, obviously, line drives is what we should be shooting for. Ground balls and fly balls. Now, the ratio will, will, will change depending on the hitter. But in general, the fly, fly balls, you're going to have more success on than ground balls. So as a, as a team, we're like, OK, well, we're going to hit line drives. And if we miss, we're going to miss in the air, unless someone is an exception to the norm. OK, so then this is where blast comes in. So OK, now I know what, what hitting is. At least I think I know what hitting is. I think I know what, it, what good hitting is and what results in scoring runs. Now we need to figure out sort of how we can do that over and over and how we can track that over time. So we, we utilize Blast to gain a better understanding of this. The first thing we did last fall was uh, run a little test. So sort of announced it to the girls prior to our first practice, about a week out when we first team meeting. We're like, hey guys, like first practice is going to be really hard. It's going to be you know, a bunch of velocity, and we're going to measure things. And they're like, they got you know, obviously a little scared, but it, it also sort of prepared them for what would have come. They didn't want to just shock them. So we took about 10 swings in front sauce, 10 swings off the machine at 50 miles per hour, and then 55, 60, 65. And then we put the sensors on in games, inner squad, anytime live pitch was thrown. This is what we found. So the plane score, connection score, and plane, uh, <laughs> this is supposed to be rotation score, um, they, um, they indicate that there is some, some change, sort of the first thing. But a uh, big thing we just talked about, too, was, OK, cool, a lot of things go into this. I need to know where things are changing. Like accuracy is super important for me. So the first takeaway is if you look at the attack angle in front toss, it's not nearly the same once the speed changes. So you're going to figure out how to use this thing. Yeah, there. So see, it's 12.7 in front toss, and then Nine slowly drops into the negatives off of 65. And then in the game, it normalizes a little bit. And the reason why it normalizes is because there's an off-speed pitch involved, obviously. So not everyone's going to throw 65. So all right, OK, cool. That's sort of an indication that we need to make sure that our attack angles are awesome in games, which means we need to be able to handle a little bit of everything. So this is an indication that we're not really good at handling 65 miles per hour, so we need to prepare for that. Second thing, second takeaway was uh, bat speed. Same thing, bat speed drops as the speed increases. And then the third, third thing is time to contact lowers, which might seem counterintuitive, but it's because swing depth becomes more important. So time to contact is from the start of your swing that you make contact. So if the ball is coming in at 65, well, you're going to make contact deeper, which means you have to be quicker. Right? Swing is going to be shorter. It's going to take a shorter amount of time to execute. Right. So uh, the second thing we sort of needed to answer was, OK, where does Blast fit into practice? So this is just like an overview. It's our practice. We have four kids going at the same time, one million nets. And Blast is right there, one cage. So we got a machine a little bit further away. We got flips. We got BP. And then we have a realistic machine. OK. So the next thing we are OK is so let's sort of break down. These are some of the metrics that I look at. And a lot of people always ask me, like, what, what, what's the one metric I need to look at? Well, they all matter a little bit. So you're never going to find one metric that's going to correlate to on-field performance. It's everything working together as one. So there is the power metrics. So we got your bat speed, your time to contact, rotation, acceleration. And then one I came up with, which is the bat speed acceleration, which is bat speed divided by time to contact. So basically, can you swing fast in a short amount of time? Then we have our swing plane metrics, which is your attack angle, it's your vertical angle of impact, vertical bat angle where the bat lays, and then your unplane efficiency, which is a score from 0 to 100. But what goes into that is early connection and connection impact. Early connection is where the bat lays relative to the axis of rotation in the beginning of the swing on the way down. And connection and impact is where does it lay relative to the axis of rotation at contact. Okay, So if there is a big difference between where the bat is in the beginning to where it lays at the end, your on-plane efficiency is going to be low. But if it stays consistent, if it's a smooth swing plane, your on-plane efficiency is going to be high. OK, so this is my nerd dashboard. So I'm like, all right, cool, this is great. So what this tells me is just a team overview for one particular day. Right? And really easily, I can sort of see, OK, who is in the red boxes? 
Right, so we can see like some of them, it's a little bit more challenging to get in, so the bat speed and time to contact ones. Um, our speed efficiency is challenging. In general, it's, in general, it's really challenging to build bat speed against velocity. That's one thing we found. But swing plane is sort of a different, uh, different animal, which I'll talk about in a couple of specific examples. This is an individual player's profile. So uh, the dark blue is sort of the first swings from we took in the fall. And then as it gets closer and closer to the orange, it's the later uh, in time that the swing is taken. And then I can also look at an individual player on an individual day. Like, OK, well, this looks really cool. What do you, how do you use that? So I'm going to go through about four different players and just sort of tell their story. So the first one here, she had a ton of bat speed. Like in front of us, she like 81 one time. We're like, this is awesome, right? So swings about really fast, but swing plane, we knew it was going to be a problem. So here is our first opening weekend. She flew out like two or three times to right field on balls that she felt like she should have crushed. Here's a video of her cutting the ball. So she's only hitting part of the ball because her bat's coming down and across. And that's something they make fun of me because I say that all the time. She's cutting the ball, okay. Down, she's a little bit out in front, only part of the ball is hit. Okay, so this is her dashboard. So we can see here, so this is our bat speed on the x-axis, our time to contact on the y-axis. So we can see she started out with bat speed consistently above 70, and then they fell. But we see her on plane efficiency, and her attack angles go up and increase. She's a much better hitter, swinging the bat slower. Here's a sort of a, a good, so we got a good swing and we got a bat swing. So this is a good visual for them. So like, okay, well, We've identified a problem. Well, okay, what does that look like? All right, one, what does it look like? What does it look like when I'm not doing it? What does it look like when I am doing what I don't want to do? So that, this will just play it through. So we get the load. So you see the hands kind of come down to the ball, infield pop up. So, and, and this is a story I tell a lot. It's like, okay, so you just hit an infield pop up, and what's the natural instinct? Well, the natural instinct is to, like, well, I need to be on top more, and then they go down through it more, and they just keep popping up. Well, we need to get, get the bat behind the ball a little bit earlier rather than that contact. So, we need to think in reverse a little bit. Here it is uh, split up just through contact. Here you see the difference. So, absolutely crushed on the left and on your right. Um, and not so much on the other side. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go through just the difference between two hitters. So um, we see the player here on the left, we see the tight little cluster. So super consistent. So again, we have on plane efficiency, we have our attack, our attack angle. So she does a really good job, she improved her attack angle a little bit. So we have the player here on the uh, on your right, which uh, is not a cluster, all over the place. So cluster, all over the place. So if we dig a little bit deeper, uh, cluster, you can see the, the connection at impact was what really improved. So it got a little bit higher. So that means her bat was laying be, like lower than her back, lower than her axis of rotation. See the player on the right, which is Early connection is really high. It means the bat's vertical relative to her axis of rotation. We see that lowered a little bit throughout the year. Here's what it looks like on video. Hope it has sound because this ball is crushed. It does. Yeah. All right, so this is our cluster. This is actually in the fall. And here we have the all over the place girl. So in general, one thing, like the early connection number, if it's high, it's going to be hard to handle a pitch up in the strike zone, okay, just because of where the bat is. The bat's vertical. I now have to turn somehow, let it get flat and work through, um, where someone that has a, an, an early connection number a little bit closer to 90 degrees relative to the axis of rotation is just going to have to make one move into the ball instead of multiple moves. So again, a ball up is having a little bit of a hard time. So immediate solution was like, okay, well, our approach is now going to completely change. We've got to sit on this pitch here and not swing at this one, right? And that's easy for me to sort of say, and it's a lot more challenging to have to do that in the box because the pitchers, you know, really quickly figure out where your weaknesses are. So 
You get any have a visual of it. Comparison. So this is first day in the fall, and this is where we're. I can see we're starting to figure some things out. She's still struggling a little bit, to say the least. All right, we see the path. So again, her, her bat speeds were pretty much consistently above 60 on this side. And here, they were like sometimes low 50s. Here, she could not hit a ball out. Here, she could only hit the ball out. And now we, we change the setup a little bit. Um, she figured some things out. This is a particular day. She hit three bombs and just came out and yeah, was on fire the rest of the year. Yeah. And so she, she, I think she got a feel where she needed to be, sort of figured out her weaknesses, what was holding her back, built it into her approach, and she ran away with it. It's pretty awesome. Next thing, speed efficiency. So what is that? It's hand speed divided by bat, bat speed. So um, it, you can, I, sometimes I even use it just as a one single number. So literally take the hand speed divided by the bat speed. But um, on the axis here, we have bat speed on the x-axis and hand speed on the y-axis. So the blue is sort of an ideal range. So the higher your bat speed is, the higher your hand speed can be if you want to stay within that ideal range. So it doesn't, doesn't make sense that someone that's swinging the bat at 100 miles per hour should have the same bat speed as someone that's swinging the bat 50 miles per hour. All right, so it's going to the bat speed is going to change with the hand speed. But the, the lower... The lower uh, below the ideal range that we are, the more of a turn it is rather than a push. So the players that are above the line, the ones we consider a little bit more pushy hitters. But this is just sort of an indication of the type of swing a hitter has. What becomes more important is sort of identifying problems, right? So we have to dig a little bit further. So this is something that you have to really work hard to put together, but this was sort of necessary about you know, three quarters of the way through the season. So if you look at your little swing tracer, go to contact, right? And then what I would do is I would go to contact, tap back one time, write down the metrics, write down the metrics, all the way back to the beginning of the swing. Do that for when she was going good, which is the top. And did it for when she wasn't going good at the bottom. So the, a couple things stood out to me. I already had an idea of what I was going to find, but it was, it was cool to be able to sort of graph it and actually sort of see what, see on, you know, on a graph what I'm seeing with my eyes. So on the, on the top, we see the, the blue line is the bat speed and the red is the hand speed. We see them stay together and then separate as one. And then in the bottom, we see the hand speed go higher than the bat speed early in the swing. And then they try to divide, but it's not as sharp of a, a, a split. And then the second thing we see is the green line. The green line's attack angle. So on, when she's going hot, her attack angles are getting deep faster, getting down behind the ball fast and then through. And when she's not going as hot, the bat is kind of gliding. So she's not getting down behind it. So you're going on fire. Yeah, not on fire. <laughs> Here's a closer look at it. You know it's hard to see. So we have the red line going above the blue. Staying together, you got the green. Here's what that looks on video. This is the on fire swing. See the rotation is happening, it's natural, it's a real swing. Nothing is really a force, it's smooth. And then here we have the not so hot swing. You see a big difference. Too quick. There we go. All right, just let it play. Let me see the difference in the initiation of the swing. Well, what this does is obviously consistency is it's, it's, it's the main thing, right? So she's just got really good bat the ball skills. Right? She doesn't hardly ever swing and miss. And when she does, it's usually on a ball out of the strike zone, and that's usually because the umpire made a back call, right? Um, but here, you know, she, she had a couple bad games. Now what, what changes is now she's, she's trying to optimize for contact. Contact's happening out here. I'm going to go right there. I'm not going to trust my swing, 
right? And this, you know, obviously we go in the office, we look at it, and we, we all right, come up with a plan of how to, how to get back. And then it took a couple of weeks, but she turned it on again, which was pretty cool to see. OK, so this is cool and all, right? But like, what, what are some of the implications for training, and how can this help us train better? So that's sort of where we're going next, going into this next season. So the first thing I think, the first takeaway is, OK, improve your swing plane first, because you don't want a fast, bad swing. Right, so if, if your swing plane's off and you pick up speed, well now you know, you're going to be in and out of the zone even faster. You just miss it the ball at a faster rate. Okay, trust thy process. Right, so we talk about the process a lot. So uh, our, the process for us is performance. You do something and then something happens and then we look at it after. Okay, and this is where blast comes in as the, feed, as a, the source of feedback. Right. For the players, it can be immediate. You take a swing, look at it. You take a round, look at the average for a round. And then I'm going to talk about some sort of a little more creative ways to use the metrics as well, um, coming here at the end. But uh, one thing that I find really important is hitters need to be able to differentiate between a good swing and a bad swing immediately upon contact. So that needs to be clearly defined. Because if it's sort of blurry, you're like, I, I guess that was good, then you know, it's hard to make adjustments, right? So we gotta, we gotta make sure that the feedback we're getting is real, and that's where the understanding of the game comes back into play. So I need to know what plays in the game so that I know how to practice. I know that, okay, I can take a front toss round and hit 20 balls out in 30 seconds, and it doesn't necessarily mean much, right? Other than maybe I have above average bat speed and front toss. But what we wanna do is obviously we wanna get better at playing the game, so. You gotta make sure the feedback is real. So what's next for us? So the next thing we wanna sort of become sort of a part of our program and uh, part of sort of the infrastructure of running a program and running an offense is establish a connection between the game, the skills required uh, throughout the game, so the metrics that as a byproduct of those, and then mechanics. So a lot of times we talk about a swing, but we we, we don't have a purpose behind them. So the only time we really ever talk about mechanics in our program is when there's an issue. Right? So that means we need to expose them on a somewhat daily basis so that we can identify issues. And then we backtrack from there. So we know what the game is. We're gonna, five, is that a five minute? Sweet, okay. I didn't think I was gonna get through this, but I, I got like a little buffer and I'm using it right now. So uh, we understand what the game is. We know what the skills required and um, here we go from there. So here's uh, my 10 made up skills of softball. So <laughs> call these organic skills. So it, it's things involved in the body. So um, consistency, so we wanna again see some variance in metrics, concentration, can you lock in? That's gonna show over an extended period of time. And then stability, obviously can you hit off speed pitches? It's gonna show there. Are you able to transfer energy throughout your body? Mobility which deals with degrees of freedom, which is basically the more mobile you are, the more options you have to swing. So if you're really tight, okay, if you don't have any external rotation in the shoulder, okay, cool, I, I literally can't do this move that you're telling me to do, Daniel. All right. The second piece is uh, neurological, so anything that deals with uh, coordination, detection, which is the perceptual element, balance, and accuracy. And then the combination of the two, which is power and speed. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna use these skills, and then now it's my goal to provide this feedback for them through practice. So practice needs to be able to tell them, okay, where, is my, where are my weaknesses on these defined skills? Okay, so the, the reason why we, we define them is just, you know, so we know, okay, today's workout is super accuracy heavy, right? So at the end of practice, we can do something where it requires you to be, uh, have good bat to ball skills. And then they perform really poorly, Okay, it was just a bad day. And then another workout, this is accuracy, it performed poorly, all right, just two bad days, right? Eventually, like, okay, I think I have an issue with my bat to ball skills. And now the conversations can start to happen. So we wanna connect these to technique and mechanics. And this is how we do it. So, example, okay, uh, this was required launch monitor or the new blast connect thing that tells you how far the ball's hit. So, uh, distance to 500 feet. So, do it off a pitching machine at 60 miles per hour, do it in front toss, whatever. 
So you take swings, add together how far the ball was hit until you get to 500, and that's your score. It's about having the lowest amount of swings. Okay? So you're not, obviously not going to hit it out in one swing. You're not going to hit the ball 500 feet. Did have that like I did in that camp. They're like, oh my god, I don't think anyone's going to get it. I was like, yeah, I don't think anyone's going to get that either, but that's not what we're trying to do. So if you hit a ball 200, OK, now you got 300 left. So and then you can present the skill stress. OK, you got to be able to be consistent. You got to be able to take three, four really good swings in a row. You got to be able to lock in for a short amount of time. You got to be able to produce power. And you got to be accurate, because you only have so many swings. Every swing counts. All right, and then we have the game. It's a game representative. Like Practice is representative to the game here. Then we have the metrics, which is the score feedback and mechanics kind of connect together. Here's another example. OK, so you got a round of 10 swings, machine set to 58 miles per hour, you swing in a green bat, which just means an end loaded heavy bat. OK, put the sensor on. So your score is, within 10, 10 swings, how many of them were swings within ranges? So you can set it up so that everything shows up green if the swings are within the ranges. Say so bat speed above 55, attack angle between 5 and 15, and time to contact under 1.8 with a weighted bat. You can change the implement, change the setting, change the setup. You could do a drill. OK, today we want to do something upper body heavy, so we isolate our lower body, do like something like a stretch and fire. Again, the skill stress here is consistency, speed. Got to be able to move my bat fast enough to get the, the score within the ranges. And I got to be able to coordinate myself enough to get a good attack angle and be fast. Again, the game. Skill, the metric, the feedback, and mechanics. That's all I got. So this is where we're going next, so I, I appreciate it. Thank you to everybody. Questions for Daniel? Yeah, any questions? I know that was a lot in a short amount of time. There you go. A lot, a lot of metrics, right? A lot of, a lot of graphs that I'm assuming that you're producing outside of, because I've not seen them in the lab. Oh, yeah, so I export them out, yeah. and then I. Those back to potentially product improvement? Oh, they are. They literally. I think the, the one thing that I, I saw was we ran this test, and I was in pretty close communication with uh, Vanessa. And uh, I think it was like two months later, OK, now you can pick the setting that you, your swings are in. I was like, OK, this is kind of cool. It's like, I didn't, I didn't realize this. <laughs> So the question is, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. OK, so uh, I, th I think the, the question you're, you're asking deals a lot with what happens to the ball. So what BLAST does is measures everything that happens prior to contact. So if you need to have an accurate, accurate assessment of what happens to the ball, you need something to tell you what happens to the ball, how fa fast the ball was hit, what angle it was hit, and the likelihood of it being a hit. But what I found just from experience and, and sort of seeing the trend throughout the season it, is at our level, if you rely on hitting the single, you are going to have a really, really hard time being more valuable than a teammate that doesn't hit that many singles, but occasionally hit a double home run. She has to be, she doesn't need to be nearly as successful as you do, and she's going to be way more valuable. That was the trend that, that I saw a little bit. So that's where I think. You don't, need to, you don't need to optimize for hitting home runs. We didn't hit that many home runs. We hit a lot of doubles. You just need to optimize for hitting balls out of the infield. So even though you're fast, OK, well, now you're going to hit more doubles because you know, the, the ball that's a little bit towards the line is double for you. That's not a double for the, for the other person. And another thing I sort of found was, OK, well, 
being a, being a good hitter and getting getting on base, hitting for power is much more important than being a good base runner. It it uh, has a sort of better correlation with actually getting you know run uh, players to home plate through home plate. Um, so I guess the second piece of it is okay. We we just need to optimize for getting to first base. And again, what I found was like a lot of the girls that hit ground balls, they also have the lower on base percentages because I think the pitchers are like, I'm just going to play right into what she's trying to do. The infielders are good enough that they don't make a ton of a ton of mistakes. So I don't, I completely agree with you that you shouldn't be sort of asking the same thing of the two types of hitters. But I think the, the standard is above infielders' heads, and then and then you can go up as you know, you're more confident in your power being able to play on the field. Um, how you sort of want to evaluate that on a player by player. Um, I think that the main thing you need to look at is how hard they're hitting the ball. And that's why I talk a lot about playing, because that is what is going to help you hit the ball harder initially. Because if your swing plane results in balls being mishit, you're not going to hit the ball hard, even though it's fast. If your swing plane is lined up with the ball, you can swing a lot slower and hit the ball significantly harder than someone that swings faster than you. I don't know if that somewhat answers your question, but. Uh, you and Josh uh, expressed a couple uh, identifiers or common denominators in the uh, metrics of bat speed. And that is that uh, T and soft paws are unreliable. In a, in, and, and, and I liked your chart where you had uh, soft toss or front toss and then the different speeds and then some key metrics. Now, I noticed that 65 was at 55 and, and the um, other uh, speeds were kind of like in the high right. 50s to 60s. Right. Um, what, is, what is your, your um, understanding of, of why and, 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 and like do you, is that something that you work and work on. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that's why practice has to look like the game because you're constrained in time on the field. You only have so much time to get your best swing off. On the tee, you have unlimited time. So I can do, I can make a lot of moves, I can be aggressive, do a lot of things that I can't do under pressure. So I think what the, what the machine sort of does for us is like say, okay, well, I'm, we're going to make sure that that time is taken away so that you get used to getting your swing off in a short amount of time. Does that make sense? Do you think the, the speeds are slower uh, and, 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 and versus, like, say, off the tee? And, like, why is the tee so, so unreliable in your guys' professional opinion? So the reason why, again, is because with the speed, you're going you're gonna to be late, you're going to be early. And based off of that, you're not going to be able to get the top speed if you're swinging when the ball's almost by you. Right? So if the ball's right here, it's coming at 65, well, I'm not going to be able to get to my max uh, barrel speed, right? I'm not going to be able to get there. Adjusting I'm adjusting. I'm compensating. I'm compensating because I'm limited. My options are l becoming more and more and more limited as the ball gets closer to me. So the, what the really good hitters do is they, they're able to wait and not compensate because their pattern is built for that, right? What the, what the not as good hitters do is like they, the, they have to hit the ball out here and they rely on making contact out here. And that's the thing where the rotational acceleration is a really good indicator of how fast that you can rotate the bat into the, to the strike zone. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. 